me, where you don't really know what you want to make, so you just start making anything and see what happens and just mm -hmm. let accidents happen and sort of see where that steers you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Dreams caters for, for that complete range. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go into a level knowing what you're going to make. You can just start just doodling and sketching, essentially. Yeah. I mean, that's what the video here is showing, is really just sort of the power of just sort of picking up these elements and just sort of sketching out a rough level, like really sort of slapdash, sort of sketching it out. It's really, really simple. Mm -hmm. Like, and Kareem isn't here. Like, uh, uh, he's the art director, and he has this thing that we want dreams to feel really loose, really like a sketchbook. If you've got an idea and you want to get it out, I was saying to Tim before you should use this in, in your production double fine, but absolutely, I meant it because you don't have to be very kind of precise. You can be, and as Mark's saying, there are certain people whose creative process involves tuning every single last thing, but there aren't enough tools, I think, that just celebrate just doodling, like mucking around. Like you don't have to have a plan. You can just enjoy it. And one thing that we learned, you know, back from making other games, we're game makers as well, it's a game, it's a PlayStation experience. You can relax, you don't have to publish this for anyone. This isn't mm. need to be for somebody else. You can just enjoy the process of making. The like thing, I think it's just, it's like there's all different types of play and creating stuff is a type of play. Like mm. Lego is a type of play. Yeah. And one of the things that I've loved about using the tools is like, because you can move between making music and doing a bit of logic and sketching out a level, there's almost <coughs> a never ending list of like, oh, I just wanna, do this. And just one more go, basically. There's one basically, more thing yeah. over here. And, and sometimes if you get stuck, you're like, oh, I don't really know how to do that. I find it's amazing that I can just go, all right, it's okay, I'm just gonna great. I'm just gonna play with the lighting for five minutes. And whilst I'm playing with the lighting, you know, a light bulb will go off and I'll be like, oh, that's how I do that thing over there. And the, you know, the, the fact that the tools are all there and you're moving between these different things, it's like tickling your brain and it's mm -hmm. just, it's a really, it's just a really, really fun way of spending like an entire, Set of hours. Yeah, and the, I mean, another big factor in the sort of creative process, I think, is collaborating with other people, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. and yep. you know, bouncing ideas off people, criticizing mm -hmm. each other, <laughs> getting annoyed, that I kind of thing. But um, that that's really catered for a lot in this as well. You can really collaborate. Right. So in Little Big Planet, if you guys played Little Big Planet, that you one person, one level. So in Dreams, you don't have to make levels. You could just be the person who makes music, or you could make like bow ties or you could make mm -hmm. you know fingernails whatever this you want to make eyeballs eyeball person You're the eyeball I could model an eyeball there you go yeah, and, and then right on a single dream you can also have collaborators so I could say like okay I'm going to let Tim Mark and Siobhan into my level and everyone else gets to play it but you guys actually get to edit it and work together and like um, jam together basically mm -hmm. so it's, it's all about collaboration um, as well so we, we do that internally to build our story so the story that you play is exactly that you have everyone in the studios marked as a collaborator on all of our levels um, but you could have teams, you could have like clans or teams or whatever you have out there in, your, in, the, in the gaming communities and you could be working together on, on your magnum opus together. So That's fun. And yeah. we actually, when you are using Dreams, we, we, we have like experience points that you amass mm -hmm. and we track the kinds of things that you do. So you kind of can accrue these personas. You might be known as an artist or an animator mm -hmm. based on the things that you've been doing. So if you do or a want player. Or a player, obviously. And the point is, if you feel like you want to collaborate on some new idea, you can actually s search for the people that have a lot experienced in making music oh, wow. or animating or things like that. So, so that if you're making a super hard game, yeah. you would then search for like the best players in the community and invite them to come and play test your level. So that this idea of a persona is super cool because you can be like, or you can reach out to the best curators of a particular genre and you're like, okay, Tim, can you pimp my level? Put it in your map of like best point and click adventures, yeah. whatever it is you want to. I mean, it sounds crazy. It sounds like you could actually end up with people starting game companies out of the Dreams community, like bringing <laughs> people sounds to good. those different. Well, you know, we got, when with Little Big Planet, I mean, a lot of our team are actually ex LBP community members, and so really? Debug and Francis are both characters made by St Steve Big Guns, who was an LBP community member, mm. and he's now part of the team, making like super cool characters. Watch, like five years from now, we'll be a PSX, so we'll be up here, and they're like, "How'd your company get started?" It's like, "Well, we were playing Dreams." <laughs> That, I mean, that's, that is, that's something that's quite central to, certainly for me anyway, that's really close to my heart, is, is enabling that kind of thing mm -hmm. for people that maybe don't know the right people or whatever, how to get into this, into this, you know, this wonderful world that we're all lucky to mm -hmm. be working well, in. Well, they might not know they like it, or they might not know they're good at it, and yeah. then they just yeah, try exactly. this when they're playing the game. Exactly. Right. So that was such a good point about um, 
the boundaries between playing and creating that seem like they're there because often a game will, you have to switch from play this level to make this level. Right. And it, you, you get used to thinking there's a difference between creating and playing, but then when you have a child, or you, it's, so much, it's so much more natural with, with kids to just be like, yeah, playtime is creative time. Right, right. And it's just a flow that goes back and forth. And when you're even playing like a, a make-believe, you're creating stories. And right. We have this like saying internally, which is that the animation, which you're actually seeing a little bit of behind us right now, um, we capture performances. So the idea is that you don't have to do keyframes and complicated curves. I mean, actually, you can do that if you're really deep. But the, the, the way into animation is that you just hit record and then just use move stuff. So right now, let's just talk through what's going on on the screen behind us. Um, he's placing down or she's placing down um, some action con recorders and just moving this stuff. So that little golden glow is like a track of them moving, puppeting the... Right, right, exactly. Well, that's just showing you the path that you've literally just moved. Right. And so another thing is a lot of these mechanics you learn by playing the game. Like you were saying, Tim, it's like play and create, they're actually really merged together. So another fun thing you can do is you can actually have that record button down while you possess a character. So you can actually record like little movies or little stories um, with your voice, with a microphone, with a headset, and you can just perform using the, the DualShock the same way you would in a game, mm. but it's recording you. So you can do little stories. It's like Henson, we call it like Henson, not Pixar. It's like <laughs> when kids pick up the, the sock puppet and they're like, yeah. rawr, 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 and then rawr, 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 rawr. that's really cool. Like yeah. in 30 seconds, you've made a story. and make You sure can play really like your own cutscene one actor at a time and exactly. record yeah. them all. And go back, rewind, and then like, play the next character and play the next character and play the next character and, and build it up. Yeah. I saw that a little bit in the uh, single player uh, trailer. I could, you could see, I was like, how are they moving that character? Because it, it had a kind of a puppeted look. Some of them had right. a puppeted look that looked like they're. Yeah, very much. Yeah, the, 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 that key word, performance, that was one of our sort of um, sort of basic philosophy behind the create tools. Wherever possible, we want to better capture a performance so that people can actually get get that kind of human expression into things. The gyros are great for that as well. It's like the cheapest, um, most effective uh, motion capture in the world. You could, and, and Steve Big Guns, who's a community member that we mentioned that we hired, he's a super expert at building like new powers. So if you look at Francis, she has this like hammer move and like these, these special moves where she does like spin mm -hmm. jumps and stuff. And if you place her in your level, you get all of those powers. But there's nothing about her which is hard coded into the engine. Like Steve built her out of around, I think it's four or five thousand individual logic gadget elements inside the game. So there's nothing about Francis which is preordained. Like you guys and girls can do different characters, different powers. It's very hard to explain until people get their hands on it. They're like, wow, and you can open Francis up and find out how he did that animation of that spin jump and how he connected it to the particular button press, double jumps. You can change the timings. Um, there's the, so th there's this like deep side to it. And then there's this playful side of just like, I want a character that is 500 foot tall and that just can stomp through my level. Mm -hmm. You can do cool that. The thing is you can start at either end of that. And I like that like, sometimes with dreams, you'll pick it up and be doing the thing of like playing with a kid and like, oh, what should we do? And then the serendipity of that is like, oh, actually, that's a really cool, I've made a great scene. I now want to turn that into a story that I'm going to publish. Like, I remember in the early days, the discussion would be, like trying to find like happy accidents. Right. And that like in music jamming, it's much more normal to make mistakes and those mistakes to end up becoming what the whole thing is about. Yeah, exactly. And in game jams, that's not always, because everyone's always in different places and different, using different machines. You don't have that same, or different programs. And with Dreams, what I love is like the idea of jamming together has a whole, it's a different thing because you're all in the same tool. You can see each other's mistakes. You can see yeah, absolutely. And, and, and they build them. off them. And laugh at each other. A lot of them are really funny and it's like, you know, it's great to laugh and it's great to laugh in games. And I love that so much within Dreams, the it's stuff silly. that people are making at home is, is just really funny. And that's, mm. that's a, it's a cool... I mean, the, the juxtapositions as well. Like, there was one person, I remember this is a couple of years ago now, and he was making a, a little pastoral scene. And he needed a path, like he needed a nice little gravel path, winding path. He just got a massive pink flying V-electric guitar <laughs> and scaled it up and turned the fretboard into the like yeah. pass. Mm -hmm. And those like stupid um, uh, sort of mashups, if you like, uh, uh, are what is the lifeblood of it. And you don't see that in, in other tools. So for example, in Little Big Planet, even, um, everyone gets the same gnome, everyone gets the same matchbox, everyone gets the same um, spoon. It's one of my favorite assets in LBP. Mm -hmm. um, but like, those were made by us for you, which is cool, but mm. it's a limited Lego set. Like, LBP is this awesome Lego set, but the pieces were like pre-fabricated mm -hmm. by Media Molecule. 
in Dreams, the set of Lego pieces is completely unending because you mm. can go in and sculpt something from scratch and then publish it and be like, okay, I have just created a completely new octopus. You know, I'm into Blue Planet right now. I'm so, I love that show. Mm. And I, I have a feeling that if this game was out right now, there'd be cuttlefishes and coral and all sorts of crazy stuff because everyone who was watching that show would get inspired and then you could then use, you could benefit from that. Or like if, if your, you know, Gang Beast comes out on PS4. Gang Beast coming on PS4. Um, you see, get ten pounds. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, no. So people will get inspired by what they're seeing around them in, in the culture. Like, not to get too like highbrow about it, but like if they see something that inspires them in the broader like universe, mm -hmm. they can like channel that into dreams and then do this like dreamy, fluffy reinterpretation of like, yeah, I just want cuttlefish everywhere in my dream. That's basically my goal. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> make octopuses I for me, please. I made an octopus. Did you? I saw it. For my octopus. I have fine, I'm so fine. proud of my octopus. octopus. There we go. I don't know if you would really like it, but. Do you, when you, uh, when you put the game in front of people, um, do you ever see, like some people like me, I get very intimidated by like the blank piece of paper when I'm right. writing. And I just don't, like if you could draw anything, what do you draw? It's so, it's so like, did you see people having that trouble and, and how did you get around that? Yeah. Uh, so we have some tutorials, mm -hmm. um, and the way the tutorials work is they're essentially these kind of half-finished dreams mm -hmm. that you can um, go in and just and finish, and that that's a really nice way to start creating as well. When you go into create mode, you can start with a, a blank canvas, but you can just browse and remix other people's things. Mm -hmm. So like a s starting template, if you like. So that's a really nice way to to kind of get. I've got actually a funny story. So we've been doing. You mentioned testing. So we've been user yeah. testing, as we call it i.e. getting people off the street to come and play mm -hmm. dreams. And they play these ready-to-be-finished dreams. And the first one is an aquarium. You get this like pre-made aquarium. And the only thing you have to do is put some fish in it. That's <laughs> the only, that's your goal, right? It's really funny, you play it. It's not like a tutorial with a, with a kind of whip. You know, it's like actually quite fun. Like just make some fish. Make something okay. beautiful. So here's the thing, we ran two user tests. And the first set was people who played Little Big Planet. They played Minecraft. They were into building games. Mm -hmm. they, they played our kind of, our genre before. Those guys, they all finished it and it was cool and we were very excited. And then we did another test that was people who didn't have any interest they in playing. They didn't identify, as, they didn't like identify as builder people. Mm -hmm. They were just gamers. They were like, I don't care about creativity. I'm not interested, but I'm going to make this aquarium because I'm here. And they did a way better job than, I have no science to back understand why this is, but like, I'm really interested by people who don't think of themselves as creators what they do, the aquariums they make. But and the what did they make? Now I want to know. Did well, there's one guy. Just, yeah, they were just wild. Like they yeah. went. My favorite was the, was the over the shoulder. It's yeah. kind of like, um, I don't know, like a first third person. Yeah, it was anyway. third person. It was like over the shoulder Shooter. fish cam. And mm -hmm. he, he had like the camera following the fish around the aquarium. And everyone else just did this like simple thing that they were told to do. But that guy just mm -hmm. went went really deep and it was sort of like, I don't know, like yeah, Gears of War almost. There's, there's like embedded camera kind of, what's a fish? Mm -hmm. there, there's another thing that we do as well. Um, we have these weekly community challenges. Mm -hmm. So every week we'll just throw out a kind of theme and say, make something that's inspired by Tim Schafer's shoes, Fish. for example. Oh gosh. Don't look. And, then, and just having that as a keyword, mm -hmm. you, can just, you can just go off and not be precious and just make your thing, submit it, and then the community can vote on who's the best thing this week. Yeah. We've been we're doing that internally at the moment, just with the team. And everyone gets involved, and it's, just, it's, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that deals with the blank canvas really, really well, because you don't have one. You've got like a theme mm -hmm. to sort of work within. And I think it's been really interesting within the studio seeing people who are not making content every day. It's been a real icebreaker for them of just like, let me have a that have something to start with. Did you want to talk a bit about Well, I was going to say, in the background here, we've actually got the video playing, um, which is showing how some of the like layers of the audio. So basically, if you want to, you can just search for music, and there'll be musicians in the community who make great tunes, great pieces of music, and you can just place them in your level. But, but then the next layer down is we get this whole like timeline system. So if you've ever used a package like, like GarageBand or um, Pro Tools or anything like that, um, that's what you get in Dreams, right there in the, in the game. Um, so here they are collaging pieces of pre-made instruments together. And the next sort of rung down the rabbit hole, if that's not enough for you, is that you can actually go in and perform. And again, Mark was talking about performance. We have these instruments, virtual instruments, which you can also get make. <laughs> so yeah, we can make the kalimba, we can make the rubber band, kind of, I don't know what instrument mm -hmm. we can make. We'll have a library of a few hundred that theremin. you guys get. Theremin, theremin definitely theremins. Um, controller theremin. Yeah, do you, are you good at theremin? I'm one of the top ranked theremin but players in yeah, the country. In the world. Well known. Yeah. 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 
New York Phil. I learn something new about you all the time, too. There yes. we go. Spoons. Yeah. I can play the spoons. I try and keep it. Great. <laughs> so, yeah, so you get to go and do that. You can build instruments. We already have a library of instruments that we've made. We also have a second screen. So if you have a phone or an iPad or, or a laptop, you can import audio into that laptop. Uh, you can take samples, high-quality samples. You can use a podcasting mic. So if you're a podcaster, you have a good quality mic, you can just record yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether you're into VO, you're talking performance. to your phone, and you're talking to the phone, and you push a button, and it sends it to the PS4, uh, or if you have a headset, you can do that directly on the PS4. If you have a camera, PSI camera, you can do that. So we have all these ways in, and as I say, like we, it's really hard to kind of convince people that we're not lying that all of our story mode is made in the game, and that extends to the designers, the animators, the, the musicians. So you know when they are making the really? foley, all the music is made, all the music all the is made in the game. So the foley of like you know when I was talking about Ed having to make crunch sounds, he really had to make crunch sounds. He 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 put them in the game, and then every sound you can then manipulate. We have reeling off. I, I, I can't even remember what they are, but there's like five band EQ, compression, distortion, wave shaping, modular synth, LFOs, envelopes, say these words, go Google them. And you don't need to do any of that. That's the beauty of it. You can ignore all of that stuff and just go, oh, it sounds nice. Or you can be the person who wants to learn about music production and then it's like, I'm going to go and, you know, change the cue on this EQ band and you can actually do that. All right, one of the stories that I like about that would be you don't know what you like, you start messing around, you right. go through the layers of the you get lost. A bit. you get lost, your sort of curator points come up and say to you, you're an audio artist. Yeah. And like for the, you get this sort of recognition. Endorphin of like, rush, you're like, oh, right, yeah, no, that's what I've been doing, I've loved doing that. And so your name, like you can, you get credit for your thing if it's shared somewhere else and can people then just pass that from level to level and it can yeah. get pulled out of someone's yeah, level we, and we sort of track the genealogy. So if somebody makes a level by um, collaging other people's Objects, for mm. example, your name, if you made a particular object, your name stays attached to that, even if it gets re remixed a thousand times. Right, so we track credit. Trace basically. back the kind of oh history. Yeah, you can, in some mode, see that person and just go to their. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so you might make um, a balloon. Like, you're just messing around with your kid and you're like, I'm going to make a, a, a party balloon. Like, take me two seconds to sculpt it. And then it gets used in some massive level by some super famous creator. And you get that kind of, some of the kudos of that famous level comes to you because you made that balloon and that's part of, you know, you're part of the success of that level. Mm. So we really want to promote a community that work together, jam together, remix together, it's, and which is part of games culture now. Like the whole idea of global game jams, the whole idea of, of, of people working together is, is what Dreams is about. Um, and Twitch streamers as well, like it's fun to watch. I, I don't know if you guys have been watching the create in the background, but it's, it's kind of relaxing, it's like, um, Bob Ross kind of thing. You can mm -hmm. just enjoy the... A lot of happy accidents. There we go. It is happy all about happy that. Happy little trees. Um, mm. And yeah, happy that's... little space that's doors. <laughs> Cyber doors. The but has anyone ever made anything in Dreams that you didn't realize they could make? Yeah, and my, one of my favorites is the... Um, like QA? Oh, my the QA. The, we have an Q, amazing QA team, and they do bizarre stuff. So one guy was testing the audio. You can tell him obsessed by audio, he said he'd made a synth, and I was like, there's already a synth in the game, what are you talking about? He actually modeled out of wood a beautiful old 70s synthesizer with knobs and dials, and I was like, that's very nice, pretty sculpting you've done there, and then I realized it actually worked, and with the imp, you could like play, push the keys, or you could roll a rock over the keys of these 70s thing, and it, would, it was a really good <laughs> like Moog synthesizer with all of the like knobs worked, so you could like resonance and stuff. And I was like, his interpretation of music wasn't as geeky as mine, his was like, I want a physical, thing that I can play and then he made a mm -hmm. saxophone it looked like a saxophone and you could play it and I was mm -hmm. like this is bizarre and then one of our web designers recently did this really hard as nails space docking thing I don't know whether it's like I can't describe it Kerbal Space Program meets Tarkovsky crazy Russian mm -hmm. anyway you have to dock a little space module into a, a spaceship and this guy's a web developer he's like never done graphics or art or um, game design officially anyway and he did the sound design, it's really terrifying, and then the sun rises over the planet, and you're just like, I had no idea that you could do a space game that was this beautiful. <gasps> did she just kill the eyeball? <laughs> she took the eyeball out, Ed. That, that wasn't the eyeball, was oh, it? I couldn't no, really that care about that eyeball already. The meanies, I think one of the key point is, if you really want to delve deep into it, it's, it's a massively powerful, flexible content creation tool that mm -hmm. can compete with lots of other content creation tools out there. Mm -hmm. But the way into it is Playing. very simple. This is what I'm going to do when the game comes out, and, I, and I'm really hoping that you guys will have a similar experience. You, you boot Dreams up, and then you just play 
dream surf, auto surf across the, the, the mad stuff that we'll have got made. And it will be like sort of infinite David Lynch, sort of, I hope, sort of <laughs> surreal experience after surreal experience. And you don't know what you're going to get. There'll be some great games in there and there'll be some crazy stuff. There'll be some like, like take it or leave it. But it doesn't matter because Dreams is all about that mashup, that, that craziness. I, I'm getting that impression. Yeah. 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 Infinite David Lynch would have been a good... There we go. For that. Tag line. Problems in, with that, but in, yeah. <laughs> well, um, we're getting to near the end. You can ask some f final questions. I would like to know what kind of impact do you, do you hope Dreams has on individuals, or maybe the games industry, or just the world in general. I, well, I certainly hope it's the start of many people's careers. Really, mm -hmm. if they've ever dreamed of kind of doing, making films or making games, this is. Perfect. Telling stories. All they need is an idea and a yeah. PlayStation 4, and they can start sketching out their ideas. You know, that's the. And certainly with Little Big Planet, like Siobhan was saying, we ended up hiring lots of people from the community. And there were marriage proposals. We played a marriage proposal level with uh, with <laughs> you once in Little Big Planet. Wait, did we get married? Oh, what happened, Tim? That, I'm sorry to <laughs> say. The um, yeah, no, we. we people's someone proposed lives to someone changed. for real in the game. Yeah, yeah they did. exactly. And, and then education as well, like I mentioned Twitch streaming, and Kareem, who's our art director, is so excited to teach people about composition, architecture, there's a, there's a whole other side of this, which is like um, really a wonderful way to uh, um, kind of educate people about art, storytelling, mm -hmm. game design. I think that was the thing we discovered with LBP, was we, there was a point where it was like we found out um, physics teachers were using it to teach physics to kids. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was great was that they were learning physics, but they were also learning composition and all of game these different things and, yeah. and game design. Yeah. But I feel like one of the things that I'm really excited about is the longer the games industry is around, the more the sort of the genres become sort of almost less defined. With, mm. with, and I feel like this m the, the fact that the tool allows you to move between sound and animation and logic uh, um, and art will mean that people will just create brand new things. Yeah. The, the limit of like what is digital interactivity is like we're really going to give people an ability to just redefine what that is. I can see Shu sitting in the audience over there, which reminds me about the virtual reality oh. aspect. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we're going to support virtual yeah. reality, not from day one, but hopefully day two. Oh yeah. And um, I think the idea of giving these tools to the PlayStation community so they can make virtual reality games is really exciting because you're just going to have a real exploration of a... Of a if, if any of you out there have tried VR and you have that moment of, I think they call it presence, when you're yeah. in the space, imagine if the feeling where you also made that space. So it's one thing to be like, wow, I'm in this amazing place that someone else made for me and it, it's super cool, but it's a whole other level if you can be standing there and I'm like, this alleyway in a street scene, whatever, I built it. And I built it in VR, perhaps. You know, I, I assembled those neon lights and I, I put in the, the little bar and then I look, the, the little radio playing in the corner. And there's a re something really amazing about standing somewhere and feeling like you're, you've just made the world around you. Mm -hmm. It's like... Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that aspect, though, of, you know, going to have a whole community of people exploring what is possible with yeah. this device, which is we've only just we don't started know. really dealt yeah. with. Anything. We basically don't know anything. So mm -hmm. when the game comes out, I hope you will show us what's possible because I, I actually don't know what people will do with it, which is kind of... That's pretty exciting. It is very exciting. That's pretty awesome. That's cool. Is there any nuts and bolts information people need to know about the game now that we've talked about all the <coughs> well, philosophical elements of it's it? It's coming out next year, oh. which for us is... Awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we'll be doing a beta before it launches, but we haven't we haven't quite got announcement dates. You yet. Some, some people have asked on Twitter if you need move controllers or if you need VR. Those things are supported, but you do not need them. You can do 100% of Dreams just with a PlayStation 4 and a DualShock. You don't need any additional hardware, but we do support those things. So if you want to do the like deluxe super edition, get yourself two moves. Event, you know, it, uh, VR won't be day one, but day two, but get yourself a PSVR. And um, we'll support those things. But um, yeah, it's, it's for you guys, all you need is a PS4. And that's it, great. That's cool. That's awesome. 